good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is you're watching us from. Welcome to Mavuno Church Online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is such a privilege to be doing church with you. Wherever it is you are, get yourself ready to worship and to praise our God who is deserving of all the praise and honor that we can give Him. Rise yeah. to your feet. If you're in bed, shake that off. Get ready to praise and worship God. Are you guys ready? Ready. Are you ready on this side? I'm ready. Man, you ready? Let's go. Put your hands together, everybody. Here we go! The Jesus power is the highest power in the universe. So we celebrate our great God. Are we T? Show us how. My Jesus power, super power, all other power, powerless. My Jesus power, super power, all other power, powerless. My Jesus power.
that our God is all powerful. He is all powerful, He is loving, He is faithful. So our response as His children is to trust Him. There's nothing that He can't do. Hear me when I say to you today, Mavuno Online, there is nothing that the Lord cannot do. There is no situation that is beyond His power. So you can trust Him. You can trust Him. You can surrender to Him. He is a loving Father. So I'm going to invite you to join us today in our song of surrender, where we say, God, we trust You. We are in awe. You, we trust You, Jesus. Yes.
God, you will take all of us. We acknowledge you as Lord of all in our lives. We put you in your rightful place. And it's in Jesus' name we have praised, prayed, and worshiped. And all God's people said, Amen. Good afternoon, good evening, good whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. It's so good to see you. My name is Pastor M and I am the senior pastor of Mavuno Church. Wow, I have missed being uh, with you this last month. Uh, uh, pastor Kuria was representing and he did a fantastic, fantastic job with the Two Truths and a Lie series. Uh, but it's great to be back. Uh, pastor Kara and I had traveled a little bit and we were doing uh, what we call the gatherings, uh, speaking in different parts in all the Mavuno churches across the world. Uh, but it's great to be home. And uh, so excited every Sunday when we gather to worship God and so if you're a visitor, we're so grateful to have you. This is a Mavuno family, uh, and this is the place where you belong. Hey, uh, if you are watching in a watch party with friends, uh, there's a, a link on your screen that you can use to just tell us where you're watching from, who you're watching with. Uh, we just love to know how we can pray for you. And even if you're watching alone, you can still feel that and just tell us who you are. And it allows us to just know how you're doing and how we can pray for you. Uh, so, hey, big thing that's happening uh, this new month of November is uh, uh, a super weekend that's coming up, 17th to 18th of November, is the gathering. It's a big family gathering. It's when we get together as the entire Movuno movement is going to be happening out at the Hill City Campus. And uh, if you are anywhere near Kenya, we would love to welcome you to come physically to it. If you're not, you can still sign up, but tell us you're watching online and we'll make sure we get you a link so you can participate those two days. Uh, but it's going to be incredible. It's going to be the last uh, gathering of the year. And it's a time when we just come to receive impartation, to, re to receive what God has for us, to give us a kind of sense of what next year is going to be about, but also a time to celebrate uh, together as a family. And I can't wait uh, to see you live uh, in just a couple of weeks. Hey, uh, as we prepare to give uh, our tithes and offerings, one of the things that has just been on my on my heart uh, is, is this scripture in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8. And Paul wrote to the church in Macedonia, uh, uh, to, the, to the church in Corinth, but he's talking about the churches in Macedonia. And he says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Uh, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. And he says in verse 5, And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. And you know, as I read, as I read that scripture, one of the things that really struck me about the Macedonian uh, Christians, they didn't give because they were rich. They didn't give because they were overflowing in abundance and they had so many possessions. Because sometimes that's how we think about giving. It's like, okay, I have extra. I'm going to give to God's work. But they gave out of the overflow of their heart. In the middle of a difficult time, in the middle of a severe trial, the Bible tells us that they're in, in their extreme poverty, they're, they're, they're welled up rich generosity. You know, I really believe that God is honored when we give, not just when we have, but even when we give out of faith because we don't have. And many times God is not honored just by the amount of the giving but by the sacrifice in our giving. And uh, one thing that I noticed in that text that really struck me is that they gave because of grace. God gave them grace. Grace is unmerited favor. You know, none of us is here because of ourselves. We breathe because God has given us grace. We live, we have a job, whatever it is, because God has given us grace. And out of that grace, they are able to overflow in generosity. I just want to commend all of you who have over the years just overflowed in generosity to God's work. Some of you have been here at Mavuno for years. Through your overwhelming generosity, we've been able to run the ministries of this church and I'm so grateful to every one of you. Some of you have recently joined and you're learning the lessons of generosity. Uh, at, at, in this church, we believe that God gives everything he wants for his church to his people and allows their generosity to fund the work of expanding God's kingdom. So as we come into a time of giving, uh, 
I just want to pray and especially specifically for those of you who right now are not giving because you have plenty but you're giving out of obedience or you're giving out of just uh, uh, faith that God's grace will, su- will support you even as you do that uh, as a step of faith. So let's pray as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. Father, I want to thank you for, for the lesson you give us in your word. Uh, the, the Macedonian churches who didn't give because they were rich. They gave even in the middle of their poverty because they had experienced God's grace. And Lord, all of us have experienced your grace. Thank you for this lesson. Uh, that Lord, we don't only always give when we have overflow, but many times we give because we recognize your grace. Father, I want to pray for those who right now in a season when they don't have overflow, they're not giving because they have plenty, but because they're trusting in you. And I pray that Lord, you would completely fulfill their needs. I pray that Father, as they give themselves to you and as they give themselves to the work of your church through their giving, that you will bless them overwhelmingly and they will be able to testify, oh my goodness, look at the grace of God that has carried us through this season. And I thank you too for those who are rejoicing because you've blessed them in their workplaces, you've blessed them in other places and they're giving out of thanksgiving for look what the Lord has done. And I thank you too for that as well. I pray that Lord, you continue to help us to grow to be a generous church, a generous people who always put the work of the Lord first. And so I just want to uh, pray now, even as we receive your word, you'd open our hearts for it as we enter into a new series. Give us eyes to hear, uh, to see, and ears to hear the word that you have for every single one of us today. Lord, we love you. And we pray this in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus and God's people say it together. Amen. Hey, I wonder who's coming for the gathering. Let me just check on my guys. Papa Kilo. Hello, Pasaim. Are you coming for the gathering? But of course, I have to be there. It's the gathering. I cannot miss it this time round. Two days. Hey, Kaende, Kaende, come on, somebody will be there. In fact, let me check for you, Pastor Milton. Papa Mills. Papa Kilo. Are you busy? Heck no. Mills to be too busy. Mills like two meals. Hey, I cannot miss the gathering. For all the world, I must be there. Ah, uh, Papa, Je- Papa Jemo. Ah, uh, Papa Jemo, because I was on a call with him. Let me merge this call. Let me merge. Let me merge. Let me merge this call. Hey, Papa Jimmy. Papa Mills. Are you coming for the gathering? What do you mean, am I coming for the gathering? Of course, not only am I coming, we will be hosting the rest of you. We are so excited and we will all be there. In fact, I'm with Apji right here. I'm sure he's bringing his army. Let's see if he's going to come as well. You know, Papa Jimmy, uh, they call me Apji because of one thing. I'm in this thing for good. I'm a permanent member. And I want to call on my brother, uh, Pastor Victor, because sometimes, you know, time zones, nini nini, this guy can be in Brussels as we speak uh, right now. Let me just give him a call. Hey, Apji. His Grace, Pastor Victor. Guru here from Ubana. You can't miss this gathering for the world. Ah, I can't miss the gathering for anything. Postpone your flight, do whatever it takes, but you have to be there. Let me tell you, this season has been amazing. Has been amazing. The teachings that we've received, ah, I can't wait for the 17th and 18th. Because as a matter of fact, I've been charging up my, 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 the pastors within my network. Yeah, we are ready for it. Looking forward. See you at the gathering. Greetings church, it's so good to see you. Uh, It's a brand new month, I'm so excited about uh, bringing a brand new series to us today. And hey, uh, what an amazing, amazing uh, opportunity for us to just get into God's word. This is why I love uh, this time uh, whenever we get into God's word because his word is actually our life. It's what gives us life, our spiritual life. It's what helps us grow. And as we start off today, I have a question for you. Who do you think are some of the most influential people in our world today? If you're sitting there in your viewing center uh, with others, you're watching this, maybe you can share, just whisper or shout out, who are some of the most influential people in our world today? The people who really influence our generation today. Uh, I hope you've had some, a few shouts. I hope a few people have shared uh, what they think. Don't be shy. Just shout it out. Uh, there's no bad answer. Uh, you know just as much as the person next to you. Who are some of the most influential people in our world today? You know, today when we speak about influential people, celebrities of all kinds come to mind. When you're talking about people like sports people, uh, musicians, politicians, social media influencers, I mean, one of the things that most of them have in common is that they have a large social media following. 
and and many of them even make a lot of money from their social media following. I mean, uh, rapper Nicki Minaj, for example, do you know that she charges one million dollars for a single post on social media? It's like, what? Uh, and if you think that's crazy enough, you, uh, I should tell you about Cristiano Ronaldo, who's a famous footballer who charges $2.4 million per post. Like, my goodness. I mean, it's so crazy. No wonder so many people today are working hard to become influencers. You know, you find young people spending hours and hours online uh, uh, trying to grow their following, posting selfies of themselves, pictures with famous people, all to show the world that they too are worthy of following. And you know, there are entire apps and YouTube channels dedicated to helping people grow their followers and their influence. I mean, we truly live in the influencer world. You know, the question is, is, is being an influencer a good thing or a bad thing? Like, like, were we created to be influencers? Were we created to have sway and impact the lives of other human beings? Is this a God thing or is seeking influence something we should all be shunning? Like if you ever wondered about things like those, I'm really glad you're here today uh, because today we're going to be starting a very interesting series talking about, it's called The Invitation, Your All Access Pass to a Life of Influence. We're going to be talking a lot about influence uh, in the month of November. Because you see, when it comes to influential people, Jesus of Nazareth, he stands tall across all history. Uh, James Allen Francis wrote a poem called One Solitary Life. And I want to just read a few, a couple of verses about, and it's about Jesus and the life that Jesus lived. Let me just quote a section of it. It says, he never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a home. He didn't go to college, never lived in a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. 20 centuries have come and gone. And today he's a central figure of all the human race. And I'm well within my mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as that one solitary life. Wow. Talk about influence. Talk about an influencer. I mean, that one solitary life is the reason we're even gathered here today. It's the reason you're watching this uh, 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 message today. I mean, it's crazy, right? But here's something even crazier. Did you know that Jesus' intention was that all his influences, all, all his followers would have even more influence than him? Like this is, this is what he tells his disciples, John 14 verse 12. He tells them, I tell you the truth. Whoever believes in me will be able to do what I've done, but they will do even greater things because I will return to be with the Father. I mean, not that they might or they sh could or they should. It's like they will if you're a follower of Jesus. Jesus' intention for you is that you will be greater than him. You'll be more influential than him. You'll do greater things than what he did. And so that's what we're going to be exploring this month. And I want us to begin by turning to Mark chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 14 to 20. Because I want us to explore the pathway to influence. There's a pathway to influence. And along this pathway, there are several invitations. And we're going to be looking at the first invitation. Today's message is your invitation to faith. Uh, because that's the first invitation that I believe leads us along this journey to influence. Uh, the, the life that Jesus intended for us. The life that God created you for. And so let's read together Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 20. And here's what it says. It says, after John was put into prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news. And it says, the time, the, 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 the someone said, the time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe the good news. As, as, as Jesus walked beside the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men, and they followed him. Wow. I mean, reading the gospel you're going to discover Jesus had one kind of like key sermon. <laughs> it's like his one key topic. It's the one thing he preached about over and over. It's the one thing he talked about more than anything else. And that sermon is 
the kingdom of God. The topic he preached about more than anything else. And what is kingdom? Kingdom of God means simply the rule of God over everything. Uh, many of Jesus' listeners were colonized by the Romans and they were oppressed by them. And they assumed that Jesus was talking about a political kingdom, a political revolution. But Jesus had a different kind of revolution in mind. His revolution had to do with starting a movement of radical, passionate followers who would spread God's love and influence all across the world. So it was a, a, a revolution of love. And there are very two things, uh, there are two, two, two unique things about the way Jesus recruited the leaders for his future mission. I want you to notice that there are two very unique things and we talk about, uh, the text uh, really shows us some of that. It says, the first thing is, who did the recruiting? See, back in the day, in the Jewish times, if you wanted to become a scholar, uh, you would do your research and you would find the best rabbi or the best teacher who was available. And then you would apply to them to become your mentor. And basically you'd be like, yeah, this is my qualifications. This is who I am. This is my family background. This is why I think I should be. It's like you are auditioning. If you've ever gone to a, applied to go to a prestigious college, then you know what I'm talking about. It's like you're filling out the forms. You're praying. You're waiting for them for the day they tell you whether you qualify or not. I mean, this was the process that you basically went through. But in Jesus' case, the equation was completely reversed. It's, it's him who did the recruiting. It's like Harvard applying to ask you to come and join them. Like, like, just what a shock. It's like you got a letter from Harvard saying, this is why we think you, we're, we're the best college for someone like you to come and join us. What a shock. Uh, and Jesus later told the disciples, he reminded them in John 15, 16, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit. It's like you, didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't, you actually didn't uh, uh, qualify. You didn't actually uh, rec recruit yourself. I'm the one who recruited you to come and enter into my place of learning. Uh, that's the first unique thing. Who did the recruiting? But the second unique thing is who was recruited? You see, most recruiters would use the Shark Tank or American Idols mo modeler, which is only the most qualified moves to the next stage. And it's like there's always this, when, whenever you don't qualify, you don't meet the cut, then you're, you're cut off and we're left with the ones who are the most qualified. Jesus could have had his pick of the most sophisticated people in the capital city of Jerusalem. But instead, he went to the backward place called Galilee that nobody thought anything important could come out of. And even there, he didn't pick the most educated people. He didn't pick the most religious people. He picked some uneducated fishermen. See, fishermen, because of their work, they were seen as ceremonially unclean. And because of that, many times, they were not even allowed into, to worship at the temple because of their uncleanliness. They wouldn't be considered spiritual people, let alone spiritual leaders. But in fact, one thing that you could even argue is that Jesus picked the people who are the least qualified for the job. So, so, so that's what's unique. Again, it's he, the people who are picked are not the ones you would think are the qualified people. And you know, let me just say this. Some of us who are watching this right now, you're online, you're watching this, you're very aware of the fact that if not for Jesus, you're the least likely person to be in church today or even watching a sermon from anywhere. You didn't grow up in a highly religious family you are certainly not the most religious member of your family <laughs> or inclined in that way. Maybe some of you are even famous in bars. Uh, some of you are addicts. Some of you had all sorts of issues. And listen, I want to just say something. If this is you, this scripture is great news for you. I want you to tell you, to, to realize you didn't qualify to, inv <laughs> to, to follow Jesus. You didn't qualify to get an invite to follow Jesus. Jesus invited you. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, relax. It's not about you. <laughs> yeah, wow, you didn't qualify. Somebody qualified you. But maybe there are others here who weren't too bad when you came to church. You know what I'm talking about. You grew up in church. Maybe you had been saved for a while, some years. If your church had altar boys or altar girls, you are probably very qualified to be one of them. I mean, you're like this decorated war veteran in the faith. Uh, you knew how to pray for hours and to fast for weeks. And, 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 and I mean, you are this like saint when you came into church. But listen to me, regardless of where you are in that spectrum, I want to tell you this. You also did not qualify for an invite. Jesus invited you. None of us qualified. So tell your other neighbor, relax. It's not about you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the one you spoke to right now is the one who's the most spiritual looking, right? Uh, see, see, God in his indescribable wisdom has called and qualified every one of us who is listening to this message today to join his revolution. It's not about us. Not a single one of us qualified to be here. Jesus invited us. I love that. You know, right from the beginning, when, when God put on our hearts to start Mavuno Church 18 years ago, God called us as a, as a church family to reach the least likely people to be found in church, the least qualified people. These were the, the 
unchurched, urban unchurched people in our cities who are skeptical, disillusioned, indifferent about church. Uh, few few churches were even interested in talking to people like these. For many of many such people, church was either a place to look religious, or a place where people were after your money. Or a place where people went when they are not very sharp upstairs, you know. It's like people who don't really think, who just want to be fooled. Uh, and, and that's what we set out. We say we're going to reach people like that. And, 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 and I really thank God that 18 years later, we've grown to 10,000 plus people in 50 plus campuses across the world. And we've seen many friends and colleagues who would never have been found in a church coming out and having a personal encounter with Jesus. I mean, marriages have been saved. Radical life change has occurred. And from what I've seen, most of the people who've come to Mavuno came because someone close to them invited them or because they decided to come and investigate for themselves because they heard of a change in someone else's life. Obviously, we're a church of people who hunger to see ordinary people encounter an extraordinary God, receive an invitation that they didn't qualify for. And today I want to introduce you to a person who fits that description. So just want to welcome Jane. Uh, Jane, I'm so glad you could join us at the online service today. And you have an amazing story uh, to share with the Mavuno family. So welcome. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, absolutely. And uh, hey, um, you, right now you serve at Mavuno Lifeway. You're pretty much on training staff as an intern. But that hasn't always been the story. Uh, Jane wasn't always uh, who she is today. So tell us just a little about, about your background. You grew up in church, I know. Yes. So I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school. I'm the first one of three. My mom also serves in church. Wow. At the time, my dad also did serve in church, although something happened along the way. Yeah. So yes, I grew up in church. I think up until I was in high school, at the end of high school. And then after high school? Do this. It was like, see you later. Yes. Do life. Yes. And you started to do life big. I did. <laughs> um, I think... I think when you go to campus, there's so much freedom that, um, and so much is offered for you. So I left church because I felt like church was boring. Restrictive. And very restrictive yeah. for me. So um, I joined the party girl lifestyle. I was going out, I was drinking. Uh, by nature, I'm a sanguine, so I'm a... I, I used to pull the crowd yeah. where I am is where people are wow. at. Wow. I used to be the kind of girl who could dance on tabletops. Come on. Legit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're this wild party girl. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Very different from who your parents from, would have known. From how I was raised. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. So that was my campus life. I have to say though, in campus, uh, I wasn't doing so well academically. And so I was a, there was a bit of sadness there. Uh, I, I always wanted to do well in school. So my plan was always to get good grades. I, so I did well in primary school and in high school. And I went to a really good college that I had no business going there apart from that I got good grades. Yeah. And um, I got like financial aid to go to that school. Wow. So when I went there, uh, everyone is richer than I am and people have cars and things like that. And so just to try and fit in, it sort of just roped me in into the party the, lifestyle because everyone is doing it. And yeah. so the best way to, to, to fit in and to feel part of it is to just get into this lifestyle. And so it's just a full lifestyle. It's the drinking, the partying, the sleeping around, the, the just... The popular girl around town. It's, it was everything. And I was um, at, at 18. That it was my first time ever drinking, ever doing anything. But because everyone around me was doing it and everyone around me also had the resources to do it. Like I said, I went to a really good, um, so the people there were really rich. So because everyone has resources, um, I think for me, it felt like the only thing I could offer was so now my presence, especially as a girl. Yeah. So yeah, this you're with this boy and you're with this boy and yeah. you're with this other one. Yeah. Wow. So somehow in the process, you end up v still kind of visiting church sporadically reg once in a while. There's something in you that just still reminds you maybe you should be in a church and yeah. you happen to visit Lifeway and then somebody notices you. 
Yes, so, so the most part of campus, I want to say I went to church and I did, but it was really just once in a while. Yeah. Uh, maybe when I came back home from school. Yep. And then in 2019, just a friend of mine said, I asked her, where do you go to church this day? And she said that she goes to Mavuno. It was just a very passing comment. She wasn't inviting me or anything, but she just mentioned it. So I said, okay, I'll go and check it out. So 2019, around December, uh, there I went and saw Mavuno. It was nice, but I, I still am not in the headspace for church yeah, or anything. Yeah. So I just checked keep, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw. Um, got there when the when the praise is over and left before the grace has been said. Yeah, yeah. And then COVID happened. No so church. again, no church. But for me, clubbing continues. <laughs> Clubs never <laughs> close down. <laughs> church closed, but not the club. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I continued with my party life. Um, 2020, 2021. Uh, 2021, I was also like working at a club. So almost every Sunday and Saturdays and Fridays wow. used to find me in events. No, let me not say clubbing, but in events. That were around that. Yeah, that were so, around that. So then um, I think you, I remember you telling me that somebody at Life, however, yes. started inviting you to stuff. Yeah. So like you said, once in a while I would say, okay, let me just go to church. And so I had this covenant with myself that once a month I will go to church. At least, so that Just I'm not... Check, yeah. yeah. You're not completely lost. Yes. <laughs> Again, also, I guess because of my background, I couldn't abandon it altogether. So as I was coming to church, um, Pastor Godwin, who is now the network, who is a network pastor of Lifeway, and also the campus pastor of Mavuno Lifeway at Kahawa West, started to notice me, started to invite me to do things. And I just used to wonder what's wrong with him. Why are you telling me to join DG and start a DG. You don't even know me like that. He invited you to Fearless Summit. He invited me for Fearless Summit. He didn't just invite me. He also paid. So you had to come. So I had to come because <laughs> now who is this paying? I don't even know how much it was that time. And so I came for Fearless Summit and it was really interesting. I loved it. I, I think out of the three days, I came for like maybe two or one. I can't remember. And... To be honest, I still went back to, to the, the life I used to be. And then God did something kind of like radical, took yes. you through some really tough, maybe you just mentioned them briefly, situations. Yeah. Yes. So because of the lifestyle I was living, around August, I had a really scary health care that in all honesty, almost crippled me just yeah. at the thought of if that had happened to me. And so I had a really nasty argument with the boyfriend I was, and it's not even a boyfriend, really. It was just a really long-term situation. Situationship, I like that word. Where you are just treated badly, yeah. but because of low self-esteem, you wow. just keep going back. Wow. So we had a really bad argument that led to the end of that relationship. Again, I was really sad. And then a few weeks later, me and my girlfriends decide to go out. Um, we do this thing called club hoping. So club hoping is you, you drink where the drinks are cheaper and then you go to party where it's the, happening. When you're high already. <laughs> yeah. Come on. So, so it makes logical sense. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we were club hoping. So it, it's in the middle of the night. We were going to like now a high end um, club and then we got robbed at knife point. Like this guy pulled a butcher's knife. What happened wow. is the um, the Uber guy dropped us and he left. And so someone just out of nowhere came and robbed, robbed us. Yeah. So we had no money. We had nothing. but had to walk to the wow. police station. Wow. So you've gone through this health care. Yeah. You've, you've had a crazy f breakup. Then you've been robbed at knife point. And this kind of just opened your mind to maybe begin began a process that helped you begin to remember some things you had been invited for. Yeah, so I felt really sad. It was one of my lowest times. And I just remember from one of this, my one Sunday things that um, about Mrs. Z, I had had it been mentioned in church. So I reached out to Pastor Godin and asked him, hey, can I join you? I asked him, is there a Mrs. Z class going on and can I join? And he said, you can join my class. Wow. And be nice to me, the class was for the Fearless Academy guys. So I joined Mizizi. <laughs> so you do Mizizi and I mean, I'm, I'm cutting the long story short just because of time. Yes. But you give your life to Jesus uh, in week seven of Mizizi yes. as you go through this experience. Mm -hmm. 
and then you find yourself because you're with his leaders that's p- pretty much who is in that group he's invited you yeah. to his leaders group mm-hmm. you find yourself graduating with his leaders or when when they're graduating you, those are the friends you've made yeah and that's how you end up getting invited to come and start to serve as an intern at lifeway yeah i i joined discovery i didn't even know that it was that's what i was doing you, you just found I yourself i found myself <laughs> so you basically left your job and started serving Yeah. at Lifeway. Yes. Now, something has happened since then because mm-hmm. you came to Mavuno because you were invited yeah. and relentlessly by Pastor Godwin. Yes. But I remember that after, as we spoke, you said other people now, you've invited other people who've also ended up coming to church. Yeah. And so it began with your sisters. Yes. So, unfortunately for us, uh, me and my sisters, we are also not uh, living the Christian life that my mom had brought us up in. And so the very first prayer I made when I gave my life to Christ was I would like my sisters to um, be born again. So I invited them to church and I invited them to the Mavuno space. Wow. Um, so my sister for the first time came for the MYF camp, gave her life to Christ wow. there with Pastor Kilonzi. And then my other sister also came to one of our services in Lifeway and give her life to Christ. Come on. Well. Come on, yeah. Jane. That is so awesome. Yes. And then after that, I know you've also had an opportunity to now lead your own Mizizi group yeah. and then invite some of your friends from the club back in the days to be part of that. Yeah, How's it, that going? It's one of my most, when I think about my year of salvation, because I'm turning one year this week, actually. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love it. Because, so this this year has been phenomenal. I gave my life to Christ did discovery without even knowing I'm doing discovery. Found myself in Fearless. Because of Fearless, I facilitated a Mizizi class. Just a few months after my own Mizizi class, I invited my friends. So some of the friends who I went to the club with, who used to sell some of those things with, who've gotten in trouble with our parents with, those guys, they have given their lives to Christ. Wow. And one of them is even serving now as well in the internship program. Wow. Yeah. So Jane, oh, we need to end this, but this is a crazy, crazy story right now. Just the story of influence that you are influenced and now are influencing. And just what a, what a year of influence it's been for you. Been. But uh, what would you tell somebody who's watching, who's thinking, you know, this church thing, I'm just not a church person. I'm really far. This is for qualified people. Maybe they look at you and thinking, yeah, you look like maybe it's because you grew up in church or something. What would you say to somebody like that who may think, I'm, I, I could never be a person who could be a blessing to others in that way? I think I would just say where I was at was the sadness and the depression and the trying to fit in and the trying to build your own life. And as Pastor M said, that Christ wants to make your life attractive. And for me, he has done that and he has used the the things I wouldn't even think about. I used to think that bec- me wanting to go to a good school and getting the good job, having the boyfriends and the flashy lifestyle is what is going to make me feel like I belong. But um, because of people sharing their faith and just showing me what community looks like and what love looks like, I'm here today. So I'll just tell you that God loves you and that if you just give in, that depression, that sadness, that trying to fit in would just be eradicated and you would feel so loved. I'm so, so grateful for this powerful story. What an amazing story. Come on, somebody. And you know, it reminds me why at Mavuno we love to preach this same timeless message of the gospel, but to do it in ways that our generation can understand. Whether it's how we do music in genres that today's generation can connect with, whether it's how we host our services, uh, whether it's just our relaxed style uh, of how we do church, whether it's preaching in ways that give you practical handles that you can apply the rest of the week. We don't do this to try to be cool. No, we do it because we want people to come just as they are. Rather than try and and change their behavior, how they dress, how they talk, we want to introduce them to Jesus. Let him be the one who transforms them into world changers who influence others. Because you see, Jesus Jesus didn't just say, come and follow me. He said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus wants to make us something that we're not already. You see, when, when Jesus found these men, they were hustling. 
They were just hustlers, basically. They were making a living. They were working hard to provide for their families, just like many of us today are doing. And if you ask Simon and Andrew what their profession was, what their definition of success was, they would have probably said, we are working hard so that we can make more money and buy our own boat. And then you'd say, uh, and then what are you going to do? And they say, well, we're, we're going to, then we'll build a small fleet of boats. We'll buy another fleet and another one. And we'll have a company called Sime, Andrew and Sons. Come on, somebody. I mean, if they were Kenyans, that's probably what they would do. And, and then you say, and then what next? And they say, then we'll enter a partnership with our neighbors, the Zebedee brothers. And, and, and we'll have, we'll control the fishing on this side of the lake. And you say, oh, wow, that's amazing. What are you going to do next? And then we'll build a fish processing plant and supply the whole region with fresh dried fish. And then what are you going to do after that? Then we'll be rich, young and famous. Come on, somebody. I mean, I, I know I'm making this up, but most young people, that's how we think, isn't it? Young people are ambitious. It's like we want to make it. We want to be known for something. But what I find interesting is Jesus doesn't criticize their plans. He doesn't tell them how trite, how foolish. He doesn't say that. It's like he's saying, catching fish is not a bad thing. I'm glad you want to do that. But listen to me, you are made for more. There's something that is in you. This catching fish is actually showing you something in you that you didn't even know you had. And I want to tell you why I gave it to you in the first place. That desire to catch fish. Because I made you to catch men. I want to make your life so irresistible and so attractive that you will influence people for eternity. And that's the invitation. He says, come follow me and I will make you something way bigger than what you're imagining right now. You see, Jesus was telling them that they were created for more influence than they had ever dreamt about. You see, those ambitions to, 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 to be famous, those ambitions to be an influencer, those ambitions even to look after the basics, they're good things. But those things you're hustling for, those plans you're making, they're just an indicator of the greater things that God created you for. Because God created you for far greater than what you're planning for yourself. And God's call, Jesus' call is, if you surrender these dreams to me, ah, let me show you why I made you in the first place. What are you ambitious about? What are you excited about? Ah, come on, Jesus is saying, surrender it to me and I will make you everything that I created you to be. Now, what does this have to do with being, becoming an influencer? Everything. You see, this call to follow Jesus is not just like a one-time event. It's not like following someone on Instagram where you just press follow or like and then you get periodic updates on your timeline when you come to church on Sunday and you see what he's been up to during the week. No, no, no. Instead, the call to follow Jesus means fully surrendering your whole life to him every day of your life from that point on. It basically means you stop living for yourself. It means everything about you becomes a tool to influence others for God and to spread his influence across the world. You see, God wants to make you so attractive, to make your life so attractive that you will influence many people for eternity. That's basically what Jesus is about. And you see, I look around today at, at, at us as Christians and I wonder whether perhaps we've lost the plot because many times we made it about us. It's like, it's like about how good our lives can become. It's like God wants to bless me. God wants to make me rich. God wants to give me a good husband. And it's like God wants to give me stuff. It's like we've settled for a good life when God called us to an extraordinary life. A life that influences people for eternity. We have dreams which are so small compared to God's world-changing dreams for us. And we forget that our calling is to be part of the greatest adventure, the greatest thing that God is doing on this planet influencing men and women for eternity through a revolution of the heart. That's what we're called for. Every one of us was created for more. And I believe this is a huge reason why many Christians are living a life without influence or impact on the world around them because we've forgotten who we are. But the disciples, ah, they got it. They got it. They left everything behind in order to follow Jesus. And from that time on, the most important thing in their lives was influencing others to, go, to join God's revolution. They were at the center of the most important thing God had ever done on planet Earth. And they lived every moment, ha, every moment of it. Their lives would never be the same. And here's an interesting thought. On that day when Jesus called them, there were many other fishermen on the lake doing the fisherman thing. They continued fishing and some of them even probably became great fishermen. Some of them maybe even became rich, but none of them have children named after them today. Come on, somebody. But look at our four people. Andrew, <laughs> Peter, John, James. I mean, their children named after them across the whole world. In China, in Egypt, in Cambodia, in Uganda. Come on. Anywhere in the world, you're going to find people with those names. I mean, we're talking about them right now. I mean, there's a, a book, the most read book in the, in the world talks about them. I mean, these men whose greatest ambition could have been to become the most successful fishermen on the lake, 
Now they were the most successful fishers of men who would change their generation. I love what Jesus, I mean, I love Jesus' dreams for us and his ambitions for us. You see, meeting your need, it's a small dream. That's a small dream to live for because you are created for more. Jesus loves you and he reaches you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to, call, to leave you that way. He draws you into becoming everything he created you for. And, and the route to that more is not what the world teaches. It's not hustle more or network more or make more money. No, 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 no. The route to that greatness is to surrender to Jesus and allow him to show you why he made you. It's, it's, it's bringing those gifts and those ambitions and those plans to him and, and those desires and understanding that these are just a reflection of something greater within me that God placed within me. I was created for influence. And Jesus' challenge to you today is come follow me and I'll show you why I made you. I will make you what I made you to be. God wants to make your life so attractive that you will influence many people for eternity. Am I speaking to somebody in the house today? Come on, somebody. You know, I want to conclude in prayer. And I just, I'm so excited today that uh, we're starting this series. Uh, uh, we're going to do a, a second invitation next week. There's another invitation that I believe Jesus has for every one of us. But as I conclude, I want to invite you to do a little exercise with me. I want you to take a piece of paper or take out your phone and I want you to write a title on it. I want you to write my influence list. So just take a piece of paper or maybe you've got a phone with you and just write on the very top my influence list. And then after that, I want you to put five numbers, one to five. And on that list, I want you to write the names of five people who are near you who don't know Christ and who don't go to church. So there are five people who you know that don't go, to, they don't know Christ or they don't go to church. They could be family, friends, could be neighbors, could be colleagues. Maybe right now there's even one that has come to your mind. So just take a moment to fill, write that name right uh, right now. You might not be able to get all five immediately, but maybe at least by that, uh, you, you've written two by now. So who are some of those people who don't go to church? Who are your neighbors, your colleagues, relatives? Take a moment and fill it out right now. And over the rest of this year, what I want us to do is to pray together that God will create opportunities for you to influence those people for eternity. Uh, through your genuine love, through the way you live your life of purpose, through your concern and care for them, that they too will actually want to know and follow Jesus. So we're going to be talking about uh, uh, our second invitation next week because I believe our, our invitation to faith is just the first of four amazing invitations that Jesus offers us along this journey of influence. But I want us to pray as we conclude. And uh, I suspect as I pray, I want to, to, to offer two invitations actually as I conclude. The first invitation is to those of you who you've known, you've known God and even accepted him as your savior. But when you look back at your life right now, you can see there's little or no impact on those around you spiritually. And you're looking and thinking, my goodness, my life has not really influenced the lives of the people around me. Currently, I'm surrounded by people who have no influence from my life. And I want to, and I believe that God is calling you to surrender those blessings he's given you, whether it's your business, whether it's your home, whether it's your job, your car, your marriage, your family, that God wants you today to pray a prayer of surrender to say, God, take these things, take, take my career, take whatever it is and use it to help me to influence others around you. Because I believe that God wants to make your life so, so attractive that you're going to influence many people for eternity. So I'm going to be praying for all of us on that prayer. But the second category of people I want to pray for is if you're here and you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've not joined Jesus' revolution yet. Maybe you've been waiting to put your life right before you do that. But I hope today you've understood something that, listen, you can never qualify for Jesus to call you. He wants you as you are. He's the one who will change you and help you be everything he wants you to be. Maybe you had a relationship with God and you walked away from it because you didn't understand or, or people came in the way and cut in on your race. But listen, today God is inviting you to come back into his plan for you, into the reason you are created for. You will never know your purpose until you know the purpose giver. And so I want to pray for you if this is you. And I'm going to start with that group of people. If you uh, you've not given your life to Jesus or you'd like to recommit your life to Jesus, I'm going to invite you right now to say this prayer after me. If you would just join me in saying this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you today to give you my life. From this day forward, I surrender to you. Forgive my sins and help me to become the person that you created me to be. Fill me with your spirit so that from today, I will live the purpose you created me for. I am fully yours, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Congratulations if you've prayed that prayer. We're so excited for you. Hey, make sure that if you're watching in a, uh, a viewing center that you let your, your uh, leader know this. Uh, if you're somewhere else with some, uh, and you're not uh, around people, then you can send us an uh, email, info at mavunochurch.org. Let us know you prayed the prayer and we can send you some material to help you along this journey of becoming the fearless influencer that you are created to be. Hey, let me pray for the rest of us as we conclude. Father, I thank you for every single one of us who is watching this message. I thank you that, Lord, you want to make our lives so attractive that we will influence many, many people for eternity. And that, Lord, this is not just for one of us or for those who, are in, who, who are, have been saved for a long time. This is for every single one of us. Uh, that this is what we are created for, a life of influence. And, Lord, your first invite to us is that, Lord, we will become people of faith and that we would share our faith. And so I want to pray for every one of us that, Lord, even as we write that influence list, that, Father, you bring people to mind that we can begin to pray for. The first point of prayer uh, of influence is through our prayer. That Lord we can begin to pray for them, to be concerned for them, to seek how we can meet their needs, to love on them and Lord to seek through your help to influence them for eternity. And I'm praying for the people of, of Mavuno that Lord there will be so many testimonies this year. In the next two months of this year that Lord people will be sharing that somebody else praying for gave their lives to Jesus. A family member who was so far from God has come close to God. Someone who never attended church has begun to to attend church simply because I put them on my list and I made a commitment to pray for them every day. And so Father, I want to thank you because this is what you made us for. As we go out into our jobs this week, as we go out into the rest of the day, help us to constantly remember that Father, everything you've given us, it's a tool for influence. That Lord, the people around us will be influenced and impacted for eternity. And so I bless you influencers and I pray that God will give you so much joy and grace as you go into this week. For we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.